Hello, welcome to the Academia do Café. So today I'm going to talk to you about a totally different copy. This copy is from Finca La Bandera. So La Bandera coffee is grown um, in the Terrazu region of Costa Rica. So this is the same region that El Angel and Ferrami uh, are located in. In fact, they are pretty close, not quite neighbors, they live across town, uh, but very, very close to Ferrami, in fact. So in that micro region called Dota, um, Santa Maria de Dota. And here, um, Diego grows coffee real high up, 1800 to 1900 meters above sea level. Um, in fact, if you have been around Ritual for a little while, you might know of another coffee called Monte Cope. And Diego and his farm La Bandera are Monte Cope's neighbors. So Monte Cope is here around 1750, 1800, and he's just right up on top. Um, I know elevation isn't everything, but it still feels kind of nice to find a farm that's up high and has good coffee. And this stuff's really good. So the farm La Bandera, uh, it's a farm that is split into five kind of different sections. One is called El Quetzal. There's El Alto, not to be confused with the farm El Alto that we work with uh, further south, which is part of the Los Cristones group. La Quebrada, La Crema, y La, uh, la, Trini la Trinidad. Um, and all of these are owned and managed by Diego. And this is uh, Diego Hidalgo's family farm. So it was first run by his father and um, like many coffee producers, Diego grew up on this farm that's now his today. And so while his dad was busy selling coffee to Copedota, Diego was starting to become a young man. He wanted to earn a little bit of money, went a little bit of adventure. He came out to the United States and ended up finding himself um, in upstate New York. Anyway, he was working in New York, doing construction, all sorts of other jobs, sending money back to the farm. And then back in 2011, like he was right around that time, he started seeing uh, the potential for the farm to be that source of success. But he wasn't going to do it in any sort of way. It was, you know, his idea is if he can produce coffee of high enough quality to sell directly to roasters like us, that would make the farm sustainable. He's not playing a numbers game here, like, uh, like here in Brazil. Um, he's not growing for quantity. He decided, let's grow for quality, find some good prices that can keep the farm sustainable. Uh, we win because we have awesome copy, and he wins because he can reinvest back into a really successful farm. So in 2011, uh, he started putting all the savings back into the farm, reorganizing the management there. He purchased the necessary equipment to, um, to process his coffee, this really awesome brand new Panagos uh, aquapulper. And uh, he processes his coffee in the honey method, very similar to like Ferrami and most other places in Costa Rica. The farm is gorgeous. Um, the level of just attention to detail here is, is amazing. Between um, not just keeping the five sections of farm separate, so you've got micro lots there, um, the way he records data, his drying system, how he keeps everything separate, it's just super clean, neat, and organized. And those are things I really like seeing in farms. Usually good coffee comes from clean, organized farms. This is another honey coffee. So you take that cherry, um, maybe you saw it from the Ellen Hell video, and you pull the skin off of uh, the fruit, and then you're left with a sticky bean. And then it goes through another part of the machine where you take the sticky off of the bean. And then you get white honey. Um, and so he uh, produced two uh, white honey coffees for us. Um, one is La Quebrada. And we found that this coffee is just so sweet. Uh, the sweetness is what I really remember from cupping this one. And what that translates into is an awesome sweet tooth espresso. So the sweet tooth espresso that we have, La Quebrada, comes from one section of farm on La Bandera. And then the other coffee we have is from the section of farm called La Crema. And La Crema is another honey coffee uh, with a similar but slightly different profile. And this is the beauty of micro lots and all of this um, organization is that you can grow coffee on the same farm with plants right next to each other and just tiny little tweaks and variables give you totally different things. And it doesn't mean one's good and one's bad. You can sometimes have two amazing things that are different. And for this La Crema, um, uh, it just was a beautiful coffee as a drip coffee. We didn't want to turn it into espresso. So 
that's what you have as a drip offering. So in this farm, I would say, yeah, look for different flavors, play around with comparing and contrasting the espresso to the drip. I mean, I know they're two totally different brewing methods, but it's still, it's coffee, and you can get a good sense of the character from both of them. It's white honey. The coffee variety is a Katura. He's from Santa Maria de Dota within Tarazu. Um, and this guy's just making some really, really good coffee. This is our first year of working with Diego, uh, and I really, really hope it's not our last.